press play, don't press pause. Progress march on with the veil over our eyes. We turn our back on the cause till the day that my uncles can be united by law. And kids aren't walking around the hallway plagued by pain in their heart. A world so hateful, some would rather die than be who they are. I don't know. And I can't change even if I tried. Even I came to the U.S. when I was four years old. I came to the U.S. when I was nine years old. I came at the age of two. Um, I really didn't have an option. I consider myself an American because it's the culture I know. I, I know my Mexican culture, but if I was to go over there, they would call me a pocha, meaning I'm like American washed. So I consider myself an American. I always knew that I was undocumented because my parents would make sure that my sister and I knew but it doesn't really hit you until you want to apply for universities or you want to apply for jobs. That's when, you know, it hits you that you have, you don't have the same privileges as U.S. citizens. I did feel afraid when I first got here to PCC. Um, I was turning in the affidavit. This lady kept asking me for saying that I was missing my social security. And I told her, no, I didn't. And she was like, yes, you did. And it's like, why didn't you put it? And it was hard for me to say, well, I don't have one. And then once I said I don't have one, she was just like, ugh, like really? And then she just took the paper and I went on my way home, but it it sucked. It felt really bad. It's like, I'm trying to get my education and you know, people like me aren't accepted. Isolation is probably one of the biggest feelings that I've encountered. For me, it's like a lot of verbal harassment and where people have threatened to do something but don't actually follow through with it, which, you know, I'm very thankful for. But the fact that even, you know, that's actually happening and, and if you see people around, nobody's saying anything or doing anything unless they're personally your friend. Uh, that's the only time people actually stand up for you. Uh, you don't really hear much about it, so I ended up spending a lot of time in, you know, professor's office just venting about what goes on on campus, what goes on in my life, and just all of that, and that was my outlet. And, and I felt like I could only do that with one faculty member on campus. It's something that I've grown up with, uh, knowing to lie about who I am. I am undocumented and gay. There was these two completely separate aspects of my life that I had never really um, related to each other. But once I heard about the Safe Zone and started talking to uh, the, the uh, members of the Safe Zone, um, I, I realized how, how much of both the aspects of my life, um, with how similar they were, how, how, how much they shared um, with coming out either um, as undocumented or gay or having difficulties on campus with, with stereotypes. When I first came to PCC, um, as somebody who was visibly out and um, participating actively in the Queer Alliance, one of the things that happened was I had a series of students come to me in really dire situations. Um, I had students who were homeless, who had attempted suicide, who had been um, threatened, bullied, and in one of the worst instances, someone whose parents offered to kill them because they were LGBT identified. And I looked around at the resources that were available on campus to help these students, and we didn't have anything. And we had psychological counseling, which is a wonderful start and many community colleges don't have, but what these students needed was in-class, on-the-ground support from faculty, managers, classified staff who really could hear and find resources for them that were specific to their needs. Safe zones are important to me because I came out as a gay man in my college years, and I always wanted to feel that there was a sense of um, just feeling okay on campus, feeling safer, feeling that I knew there were people to go to and ask questions or seek their help if I needed it. As a 
a U.S. citizen who was part of a family reunification when my father was deported when I was 10 years old, um, I have a very deep um, empathy for these students and their families and um, having first, a first-hand account as to how destructive um, deportation can be for families that have been stably um, living in the United States, working, contributing, studying. Um, I wanted to do whatever I could in my position here at PCC to support students and their families to ensure that um, Pasadena City College was a safe place for them to study and to be productive members of the community. Sometimes when we hear about pairing undocumented students and LGBT students, a lot of folks say, oh my gosh, those are two really unique and distinct communities. And I would say while there are some unique distinctions within both, they actually share a lot of qualities. The primary one being having to verbally articulate a coming out process. You don't know if someone is undocumented until they tell you for a certain reason. And you don't know if someone is LGBT identified unless they tell you for a different reason. So they both require a level of self-awareness and understanding that people are comfortable sharing. So the foundation of safe zones is really was, is based on research that in the theory of validation, non-traditional students who are non-traditional students, be these two populations who are highly politicized, both, right? And secondly, there's not, there's certainly not resources or a structure for these two populations. You, you don't have, you, you have the veteran center, you have DSPS, but you don't have an undocumented center and you don't have an LGBTQ center. So I think both groups um, understand each other. A safe zone at PCC is really just that, you know, a place where folks can feel safe regardless of uh, sexuality, sexual identity, um, you know, documentation or lack of documentation, uh, religion, anything really. And it's really an open space to be able to dialogue and be supportive um, to everyone. So a safe zone is an individual or an ally who has participated through, in our case at PCC, a seven hour training. The workshops, I would say, are really great. We try to keep them interactive and hands on. We cover basic things. The first thing that we cover is a little bit of history regarding each population. Then we talk about some of the specific legislation or policy issues that affect those populations. And then the final thing that we look at are interpersonal skills. What can we do to really support those students? We also bring students into the trainings so that the faculty and staff can hear directly from them and know what it is that they can do to help them. The research shows that the students that have that support, that are able to navigate and feel comfortable on the campus, more than likely will succeed and move on to, to the next step. Everyone has a right to an education. And the community college is really the gateway towards a brighter future. Our hope is to eliminate safe zones and so that PCC is a safe space for every student so that we don't have, you know, a safe space here or there, or, you know, in, in, in different areas of the campus. We want to make sure that the whole campus, that students feel comfortable through the whole process while they're here at PCC. PCC has always said that student success is our top priority. It's really um, about helping all students. While Safe Zones currently is configured for LGBT students and undocumented students, it may not be configured that way forever. It's really about saying we want to support the cultural needs of our students because education is the number one thing that allows for success, particularly in the United States. I think you should get involved in Safe Zone trainings because there are tons of students out there who really need to know that you have their back. No human being deserves to be, to feel isolated in a campus that's for the students. Um, and I think that uh, Safe Zones is a great idea because, you know, it, it educates people on certain situations that they themselves might not be experiencing. And it just, just builds a greater sense of community. By pain in their heart, a world so hateful, some would rather die than be who they are. And a certificate on paper isn't gonna solve it all, but it's a damn good place to start. I don't know. And I can't change, even if I try.